teach something called Soma Breath or Soma Breath Work. Uh, you have a great website, somabreath.com. I actually si signed up for a couple of your courses. I was, I was uh, doing one of the breathwork meditations last night, the sleeping one before bed, um, which was beautiful. I love how you, you know, apply this rhythmic music uh, with the with the beats uh, that match the the breathing methodology to the breath work. I mean, the music's beautiful. Um, your voice that's guiding, and then also the breathing. I think it just enhances the experience ex exponentially. Um, and I know you got a lot of great resources on your website. I want to encourage people to go check it out. It's Soma breath.com but talk a little bit about what soma is what does soma mean where does that come from so actually soma has got a few meanings uh and it can be whatever you want it to be as well but the original soma was the from the legend of soma the rig veda 50 000 references to this um concoction this psychedelic concoction nobody really knows what it is uh but the gods would be totally addicted to it and they would use it to become immortal. They use it to, uh, you know, to speak to the gods. They have divine intervent, you know, uh, uh, downloads and all this stuff. And and it was basically like the most powerful psychedelic trip of all. But it gave you all these other health benefits as well, where where you become immortal and all that famous thing. So basically, what happens is the soma starts to run out. It gets controlled or it becomes scarce or whatever. And all the gods freak out. They freak out because they're all addicted to it. So that's when they go inward. And they're like, we must figure out how to create the soma from within. So we don't, are not dependent on this stuff anymore because it causes so much misery for us. Um, so that was the invention then of all these ancient practices, yoga, pranayama, um, these shamanic practices you know they're all about creating these bliss states samadhi nirvana states pranayama you know meditation um from within so that's that's the general kind of gist of the story is is like how we end up with this kind of ancient practices and yogic systems um and the soma you could say is the these Molecules are re released, these chemicals, the, the chemistry that your brain creates uh, and your nervous system creates when you're under this positive stress response. So when you get into that positive stress, if you know, if you can pack it so that you can expand it, then you go into these incredible, like enlightened states of consciousness, super consciousness. And um, so what happened was by accident, I kind of somewhat by learning how to heal myself, I started to revel and go deeper into these practices uh, and started studying from various shamans and meditation teachers and even hung out with people like Wim Hof. You know, the, he's a very good friend of mine. He's quite famous um, for breathing practices and, and cold practices and things. And I, I, I'm a music producer. Music's my big passion. And one of the first things I discovered was music's a great way to change state. And, and I actually produced the music for the Wim Hof Method and various other things. Like a lot of uh, therapists like Marissa Peer, she's quite famous now, I'm a therapist, she uses all of my music. Mind Valley, I produce a lot of stuff from Mind Valley. Um, so I knew that there, there was a secret with the music combined with the breath. And actually in the early days, what I used was this two, four rhythm with music. So rhythmic music time to the beat. Because usually when you do pranayama, you're meant to count like in for two, out for four, or in for four, out for eight, in for 16, out for 32 or whatever, right? And you'd use like a mala beat or something like that to count. Or you'd use a, a watch to count the seconds, right? But that's distracting. And meditation, you shouldn't be distracted. Meditation, if you want to get the benefits of meditation, you want to be in a single focus. And one of the techniques, this Kumbhaka technique, which is a very powerful meditation, is a, a way to get into very deep meditation, is what triggers this positive stress response as well. Um, basically, it's a really, really powerful meditation technique. And 
the thing is, if you're using like beads or using a clock or something like that to count, it kind of throws you off the practice of meditation. It's not as effective. But with music, because it's got a rhythm to it, and the music just flows, if you breathe in time with the music, then what happens is you let go of the conscious like, like control that gets you distracted. And you go into this kind of flow state just through just going along with the rhythm. You've, you've done the tracks, right? And what I realized that if you build up this sequence that we prayed, which is rhythmic breathing followed by breath retention, and you build it up in a sequence, going faster and more deeper with the rhythms and then going into more deeper, all to say consciousness, with the right kind of effects on the music as well, you can create these profound like psychedelic like trips um just through breath and music and what i believe is actually like because what i i uncovered a few kind of ancient um uh, uh texts uh, that had been translated by like more kind of recent times in like the 70s and stuff uh certain swamis who laid out this some of the sequences for creating the soma within and and the kundalini waking up the kundalini which is another kind of way to explain that um, and I realized that what I'd done by accident naturally was I just created the same kinds of things that these people have been talking about but I'd made it more fun more accessible using this this music and rhythms which we call breathing beats breathing beats technology and now it's turned into these amazing experiences we, we do these ceremonies with like sometimes up to three four hundred people in mind valley i did it on stage with these massive visuals it's like a spiritual rock concert or something um you know like a rave a spiritual rave and uh with hundreds of people and it was just unbelievable ceremony that we prayed and uh, now we have hundreds of instructors all around the world delivering these experiences and a great thing with it is you can even just do it through zoom you know you can do it through a, um, a platform like this and uh and the thing is with it, this one technique, we have different um, lengths of it. So shorter versions, longer versions. The shorter versions, the daily dose, which we call it the daily dose, gives you a lot of the benefits I was talking about in terms of the meditation benefits, the um, rhythmic breathing coherence, and also the positive stress response, the kumbhaka, which uh, leads you to have more oxygen efficiency. So oxygen efficiency can make you theoretically live longer you know it can because it protects you against the oxygen uh, oxidative stress in pranayama uh way one of the ways it was originated was also studying animals in nature and they realized that animals that live a very long period of time they have very short breath rate uh, sorry very um slow breath rate so two to four breaths per minute like elephants and turtles and animals that don't live a very long time uh, like rodents, they breathe like 30, 40 breaths a minute. But humans, we have the ability to con consciously control our rate of breath. On average, we breathe around 10 to 12 breaths per minute, you know, maybe more. Some people will breathe like 15. And we live around you know, 70 years, 80 years on average. But by using these techniques, we can actually slow our breath rate right down to like four breaths per minute. And that can actually translate into potentially longer lifespans so you know this could explain also why yogis go and live the, the ones that ancient yogis have been talked about in these these famous books i also wrote the yogi go and live in the himalayas where the oxygen levels are very low and what they've done is they've hacked this high co2 environment they, they're able to survive in very low oxygen environments and what happens is when you go into a hypoxic state if you can maintain it and not have anything harmful happen to you you can trigger this state of samadhi nirvana divine bliss but you can see actually on youtube you can watch um, a study they did with hypoxic chambers where they um, put a guy into a um, very low oxygen environment for like several minutes and his spo2 level goes right down to like 60 and he describes a feeling of being in this absolute divine bliss state, euphoric state, where he just lo uh, lost all sense of judgment, self, ego, all of it. 
faded away. And, um, and maybe the yogis have hacked being able to stay in this state for long periods. And that's why they're in a permanent state of nirvana and bliss. And they live long periods of time without any diseases. And what we've done with Soma is we, we, we give you the ability to get there. You know, you're not maybe as extreme as that, but it can get you that feeling, that bliss state that can last with you for you know, several hours after doing, doing a practice.